You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. That's a tough game day. In college, Mark, Maryland goes down to number one Purdue, 67-53. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne, Mason's in the middle. Bruce on the end, the Terps just could not get this below 15. All night they tried. Bruce, what did you see out there? I saw 26 points from Jameer Young and a great performance by the girl at halftime flipping the things on her head. I thought that was unbelievable. All right. I missed it. I was trying to get some popcorn. It took a while. Well, great crowd. You know, the students were here because they're on vacation. But uh, a great crowd with just a better team. And listen, it's about shooting. It's been the problem the whole year. You know, what did Reese wind up with? I don't even know how many. I, and uh, Dante only three or four points. They're just not going to win. They got to score more. And hopefully they bounce back on Sunday at Minnesota because, uh, you know, we're south now. We're one and two. It is mixed that goal of 11 or 12 wins that much harder. Mason, you talked about the schedule. There's only one more ranked team on there right now. Where do you go from here? Yeah, the Terps uh, head to Minneapolis to take on Minnesota Sunday. I think that one's at 2 o'clock back here next Thursday, uh, the 11th for Michigan here in College Park. And then uh, really what will be maybe their last chance to get a real true quality win, but it's on the road, a place that Maryland's played well uh, at Illinois. Illinois does come this way later in the year. Outside of Jameer Young, Maryland made nine baskets. That's it. Outside of what he did. And he wasn't that effective. He looks like he was still sick. Deshaun Harris-Smith looked like he got punched in the face, literally, early in the game. Never really recovered. They went every place else they could for offense. They tried Jordan Geronimo. They gave a lot of shots to Jamie Kaiser. They, they tried everything they could. The ball would not go in the basket. When that happens right now on this team, there is no second option, and that's the problem. If it's not Jameer, it, it's not going for Maryland. We'll take this word from Rich Aklich and Viner Forgates. We'll be back in a moment. from Viner Forgates. We make your company work. I'm Martha Smith with Viner Forgates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. The biggest difference in a truck accident versus a car crash is the investigation that the lawyer has to do right from the beginning of the case. Number one is obtaining the log books of the driver to show that the driver was not rested properly according to federal law. Uh, investigating through the black box and getting an expert to figure out from the black box of the truck, the speed of the truck, or where the truck had been. So it's just different type of handling. Usually you have catastrophic injuries involved with tractor trailers as well. You have a massive heavy vehicle that strikes a much smaller vehicle, you're going to have more massive injuries. So it's a different ball game. And if people are injured in a truck crash, they really, really need to find a lawyer that knows what he's doing with truck crashes. Back on the floor, you know, coming off the bowl win, that was great. I actually expected Merrill to win tonight. Uh, silly me, because you have this tradition of beating these highly ranked teams at home. It happened last year. 19 wins in a row, and that streak is over now. Bruce, what do you think of this lineup? Well, Mason made a point after uh, Jamie Kaiser, I think, made a second three, that he should be in the game. I mean, nobody's hitting anything except uh, Jameer, and he's right. He needs more minutes, though. He can't come in and miss a couple shots and go out. you got to give him a chance. Something got to find a hot hand. I thought Jordan Geronimo was okay tonight, but uh, they need somebody to hit threes. Or it's going to be problematic down the road. Jameer, listen, 
he might start scoring 30 a game because he has to. But somewhere the points have to come. Mason. Yeah, uh, Bruce, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, when Julian Reese is giving you pretty much zero the entire game, he might have finished with zero uh, tonight. You, you got to find it somewhere else. Um, and there's a few places too. I think Harris Smith's got to find a way to get to the basket. Kaiser's got to play more. Noah Batchelor's got to go in if those guys aren't aren't producing. Because look, you look at the game, and Maryland's really they're not losing by much. Where they're losing is they're just not putting the ball in the basket. The effort's there. The rebounding's there. You know, all, the defense is there. It's just the baskets aren't there. And in basketball, you got to put the ball in the bucket to win. It's that simple. What, what is Hank, uh, Hank Eba, the famous quote, quote he said, uh, there are two great plays he's seen, South Pacific and the ball goes in the basket. No That's doubt. That's it. While well, we got a minute or two, Wayne, let's make some predictions for the NCAA championship game. Michigan and Washington. I was really impressed with this kid Penix. I thought he was fantastic. But Michigan seems to be on the roll. What do you guys think? Uh, give me Washington. Really like the way uh, your guy, Michael Penix, is playing. He's been my guy since he was at Indiana. And it reminds me of a story long ago, the first time I saw Ozzie Smith. I said, oh my God, that guy's fantastic. Back when he was with the Padres. Uh, I saw Michael Penix at Indiana. And I said, this, this guy has it. Then he got hurt. He stayed hurt. And now he's back. And maybe one day he'll be a Washington commander. So I'm going to go with the, you take the M or you flip it over and take the W. I'm going to go with the W. I got Washington to be the last Pac-10, Pac-12 national champion. Let's look at it in a positive way. We have two Big Ten teams playing yes. for the national title, and the Big Ten, including the teams from last year, went ten and three in the bowls. That's a great sign, and I do believe Michigan. It's a horrible year. They haven't lost the game. Played a tough schedule. Um, Tougher than Washington, I believe. But then again, give Washington credit. They beat everybody they played. I don't know how Michigan can be in a four, a four and a half point favorite, though. I don't, I don't get it. But I do believe that they're going to win. All they have to do is clean up the special teams garbage. And <laughs> that was said, some garbage. Listen, and plus when all is said and done, the best player on the field for either team is Blake Corum. Well, not in this case. All right. I think the best player for either team is Penix because well, he has the ball every play. Well, we'll see. We okay. will. And with that, uh, that'll end our dreary evening in College Park. The Terps go down to number one Purdue, and we will... We'll make a playoff show. We're going to have one more. We'll, we'll have an in-between show between now and when Maryland plays Michigan here on January 11th. Good evening from College Park.